Hello and welcome back to another episode of Maver. Do hunting, fishing, camping, everything outdoors. Today I'm back in the home state of Minnesota and I'm going after some night fish. It's uh, obviously pretty dark outside. It's roughly 8:30, and my buddy Will and I. Let's do this, guys. We're gonna Here we go. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this right now. We're hopefully gonna catch some crappies. If you guys didn't know, I guess you wouldn't know because I haven't explained it. But today was an absolute grind for me. I spent four or five hours trying to catch a carp and driving all over Minnesota. I think I drove like three or four hours one direction just to try to find a carp. Absolutely ridiculous. That's over, that's behind us. Now we're hopefully gonna get on some fish. So let's try to catch them, let's try to cook them. Um, I've got the truck with me and I've got, a, I've got a little propane stove so hopefully we can catch some fish and cook them up. So stay tuned, we're gonna get some lines wet and hopefully get some fish your way. Got him. Yes, sir. It's a little guy. Just like that, we got the first one of the night. This one's not big enough to keep, so. Well, he is big enough to keep. I just don't think I'd get that great of fillets off of him and put him back. So the way that we're catching these fish is super cool. We're, uh, we're only fishing with, if you can see my bobber there, that's where my bait is, where my hand is, so. It's only about a foot deep. These fish are sitting up on these pylons and right on the docks are relating to structure really well right now. We're just sight fishing them, so when we see a fish, we'll, we'll cast at it, and that one that one I saw and cast right at it and it ate, so hopefully we can get a couple big ones so I can fry them up. So one thing I forgot to mention is that we're trying to be super careful on how loud we're being, so that's why I'm whispering right now, but we're also trying to be super careful with how much noise our feet are making, so this dock is made out of wood, and every time you take a step, it makes like a creaking noise. And these fish are so high up in the water column and so close to the dock that even just a little bit of noise could spook them off. So we've noticed that we've came up on some of these, these pylons and some of these lights and that these fish will just spook right off. So we're being really, really quiet in hopes that we're not going to spook off a giant. get off shoot he got off <laughs> oh man didn't get a good hook set on him I was too busy watching him <laughs> gotta let him eat it Come on, bucko. There go. There go. That one it's been a little bit of a struggle they're biting pretty light but there we are got another nice little crop here They aren't very big, but they're sure gonna taste good. Man, they're heating up now. What is up with that, dude? Looks like he got hit by a northern or a musky. Dude, Poor little crazy. guy. Crazy. Look at. A little catch and release here, little guy. The bite's definitely picked up. We found a little school here, sitting underneath this light, which is funny because our trucks are right there, and we literally just walked a huge circle. There's not a lot of big fish here, but there's a lot of fish here. So it's a nice change up from what I was experiencing earlier. Oh. Way, way over here. Oh yeah. See them all right there? Yep. Here, I'm just gonna set this right here and then just do your thing. I'm gonna go grab my rod. Uh, one right, right in between me and the dock. And my face is off. See them right here? Alright, after how slow it started off, Will and I just doubled up on two keepers, so probably about nine inches. Nothing huge, but we're in the metro so we can't complain. I think that's going to do it for the ones that I'm going to keep in. We're still going to keep fishing for fun, so let's get back at it. Alright, 
well I've got my line out of the water let me explain quick what I'm using for my setup and what I'm using for bait so for my bait I've got a small pink plastic on a chartreuse jig head that's on three pound mono and then my main line is just a four pound nano braid and I'm throwing this on a 3000 size reel and an 8.6 medium light rod. This is actually the same rod that I use for hair jigging for smallmouth bass. I can actually swing and pitch my line because this rod's so long, so I actually don't even have to open my bale half the time, which is really nice, so. Perfect for bobber fishing, perfect for smallmouth fishing. If you're looking for an 8.6 rod and you're looking for an application for it, give it for hair jigs for smallmouth and then use it for crappies in the meantime, so having some fun, but if you guys wanna get out and try this yourself, that's what I'm using. All right, so if I'm being honest, we fished a little bit later than expected last night. Wasn't really feeling cleaning up those fish at 12.30, to be honest with you. So here we are, it's a new day, and I'm gonna cook up my fish sandwich. I'm, I'm hungry, it's lunchtime. Um, ch take a look at this, this is, this, is, this is something else. So it's been pouring off and on today. This is a perfect day to be inside, cooped up, cooking up some nice crappie sandwiches. So I'm gonna go grab the crappies and let's get them filleted. I'm gonna do some butter lettuce, some tartar sauce, and then of course I need a bun. So I'll grab a bun. Uh, I'm gonna do something different with the bun though. There's the juice right there. Jalapeno olive oil. So I'm gonna toast my bun with jalapeno olive oil to get a little extra kick. And then of course it wouldn't be catch and cook if I wasn't using a random batter, or random breading rather. Joe's Gourmet. Some fish fry. Um, there'll be a link for that in the description if you guys wanna try it out. I don't really know what it's supposed to be. I think it's Louisiana. Louisiana style, it might be spicy, it might be like Cajun-y. I don't know, I'm always done to try new stuff, so I'm gonna give it a go. This batter calls for an egg wash, so I'm gonna beat this egg up, put my fillets in there, and then shake it all up in a Ziploc bag. All right, well, my oil's not quite ready yet, so I think I'm gonna take this time to get my buns ready. That sounded weird. If you guys haven't tried jalapeno-infused olive oil, I would recommend. This breading looks unbelievable. Let's take a look. Looks like there's some cornmeal in there. I don't know. We're gonna test out this new breading right now. I'm gonna try it plain first, see what the heck it's like. I said I was gonna try it plain and I dunked it right in my tartar sauce. I'm an idiot. Wow, that is really good. It tastes like kind of Cajun-y. Cornmeal, wheat flour, onion, garlic, spices, salt, citric acid, orange peel, natural flavors. So it's not even really like spicy, it's just like there's just some different flavor in it, and that's kind of what I was getting out of it. it. Tastes really, like I can kind of taste the orange peel. It tastes like a little sweet, and I can taste the garlic in it for sure. It, the, the aftertaste kind of reminds me of like an everything bagel. You can taste that like onion and garlic in it. Pretty good. I'm a big fan of everything bagels, so. Yeah, no. It has a good aftertaste, like a sweeter aftertaste, but you can definitely taste that uh, that onion and garlic in there. It's still a sucker for shore lunch, but that's a good tw that's a good mix up. Let's let's get the sandwich going now. Well, there's my crappie sandwich. After uh, a lot of hard work yesterday, after trying to catch carp for five hours, and then scavenging the docks of Metro Lakes for small panfish, I finally have my lunch. So let's, uh, let's bite into these suckers.
All right, folks. Thanks again so much for tuning in this episode. Sorry we couldn't cook out of the truck. Last night, your boy was a little tired, and today it's a little rainy. So there's going to be plenty more truck cooking episodes to come up. In fact, I think I got a couple planned. But thank you to Will and Justin for showing me their, uh, their little secret spot and tricks. And putting me on some fish, because Lord knows I couldn't yesterday. And that's all I got. So thank you so much for tuning in this episode of Mav. And until next time, I'm Maverick and Tight Lines. All right, so it's pretty obvious that I need a haircut. It's getting a little long, so I decided to go to the best reviewed haircut salon in my city. And you guys might be surprised by the look of it. Yeah. All right, let's go give it a shot.